hello uh, in this session i will give a demo of uh, how to configure uh, pcc's and pcs in an ix network uh, client uh, from scratch in a back to back topology followed by uh, pcf session establishment and pcc traffic generation uh, so let's start with uh, configuring a pcc i have two ports let's uh, configure pcc on one of them so by default uh, our dg is configured with uh, 10 pccs let me configure the ip addresses of these pccs since i'll be uh, giving this demo in a back to back topology let's put all the pccs in a single subnet uh, and all of them will be talking to a single pce now apart from ip address report the gateway ip and then directly move to the pcc stack uh, in pcc first of all the pc ip for address has to be configured which is the same for all the 10 pccs apart from then uh, apart from this uh, there are other configuration parameter like max lsps per pc report this is used for bundling multiple lsps inside a pc report message uh, by default uh, bundling is off uh, because the number of uh, lsps per pc report is configured one if uh, uh, user wants to have bundling this number has to be more than one then keep alive and dead interval timer can be configured uh, then uh, there is a parameter uh, named return instantiation error. The purpose of this uh, field is uh, if user wants PCC to send PC error message upon receiving any PC initiate message from the PCE, uh, this checkbox needs to be enabled. Uh, used for more of a negative testing. And uh, then we have this parameter named expected initiate LSP for traffic. Uh, these are the uh, expected initiated LSPs that PCC uh, expects to be uh, learned from the uh, PCE. So these uh, LSPs will be configured on the PC side and PC will be uh, installing those LSPs in the PCC. Uh, let us configure per PCC uh, 10 LSPs uh, expected 10, 10 expected lsps uh, and let's go to the expected initiated lsp for traffic endpoint here uh, let us configure the symbolic path name from xia lsp1 to xia lsp50 i will come to this uh, this tab uh, again when i'll be uh, showing the traffic uh, and discuss about the significance of this tab let me go back to PCC and uh, check what is there in the capabilities tab. Uh, since uh, our PCC, uh, we are supporting only stateful PC, PC and PCCs. So these uh, tabs are all grayed out and enabled. User cannot configure them as stateless. Uh, this SRPC capability is uh, something that user can uh, disable or enable. And there is this maximum SID depth that gets advertised by PCC inside this SRPC PC capability TLV. Now let's uh, configure a uh, PCE. So a uh, PC stack uh, by default comes up with uh, a single PCE uh, with uh, 10 uh, PCs, uh, PCF sessions with uh, 10 different PCCs. Configure the IPs first. Then let's go to the PCE stack. Uh, in this stack, currently we have not anything uh, that the user can configure. Uh, all these uh, parameters are for uh, future uh, future support. Uh, we are not supporting these parameters right now in this current release and will be supported in subsequent releases. Uh, now let's go to the PCC group stack uh, over PCE. Uh, the PCC group stack over PCE actually defines the PCF session parameters for each PCC. As the name suggests, PCC group allows user to group multiple PCF sessions with PCCs that have common properties like number of LSPs per PCC or number of ERO's metrics with uh, which the LSPs are constructed. Uh, user should group similar PCF sessions with different PCCs in a single PCC group. We'll discuss further when we configure them. 
so in a pcc group under pcc group there is a basic and capability step in under basic uh, first of all the uh, pcc ip4 addresses has to be configured um, before that let me configure another pcc uh, group and uh, distribute these 10 sessions between these pcc groups as five in pcc group one and another five in pcc group two now let's come to pcc group one let's first uh, configure the ip addresses of the pccs it was starting from 11.1.1.2 and then uh, uh, this is for maximum LSPs per PC initiate. Again, this is for bundling multiple LSPs inside a single PC initiate message. Uh, by default, the bundling is off because uh, the number of LSPs is configured one. User has to configure more than one if uh, he needs bundling. Then keep alive and date timer interval can be can be configured. And then uh, the number of LSPs that uh, a PCE uh, will be sending PC initiate message to the each PCCs that we have to configure here. Uh, all the PCC sessions uh, that are there inside this group uh, will be having uh, same number of uh, 10 LSPs uh, per PCC. So this is a global parameter. Uh, we cannot configure uh, different number of LSPs uh, on different PCF sessions within a group. So when these uh, 10 LSPs are uh, configured here, corresponding there will be 10, uh, uh, 5 into 10, total 50 rows in the uh, initial LSP parameter tab. Let's just go back to PCC group and check the capabilities tab. It's same as the PCE cap PCC capability. Uh, PCE, we are supporting only stateful. So uh, all these stateful capability, LSP update and LSP installation capability are uh, enabled and uh, grayed out. Uh, user do not have uh, control to disable them. SRPC capability, however, can be enabled or disabled. Now let's come to this initial LSP parameters. Initial LSP parameters tab actually uh, is the static uh, TD uh, for the PCE where the, uh, uh, someone will be configuring the LSPs that this PCE will be sending as PC initiated LSP message to corresponding PCCs. PCCs. So I have configured uh, 10 PCCs uh, 10 LSPs per, 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 per PCC. Uh, the, the basic tab, uh, the all LSPs will by default be activated. And these four objects, endpoint, SRP, LSP, and ERO, these are the must objects in a PC initiate. By default, they will be enabled. And uh, these other objects are also uh, can be present in PC initiate message uh, to define a LSP, and they are optional. So by default, they are uh, not included. Uh, so user, uh, the minimum thing that user has to configure uh, is first of all the endpoint of those LSPs. So let's configure them. Someone can configure the uh, as endpoints as IPv6 addresses as well. Then let's go to the SRP. By default, there is uh, no need to change anything in default scenario. Uh, the uh, state machine will be incrementing the SRP ID number for each LSP automatically. Similarly, in LSP, the LSP IDs will be automatically learned from the PCCs. Uh, the symbolic path name, however, uh, can be configured by the user as per his need. Let us configure LSPs from 1 to 50. So there will be 50 LSPs. And the next thing that the user has to configure is the a number of ERO's these LSPs will be consisting of. Uh, again, this number is a, is a global across the PCC group. All LSPs of this PCC group will be having, let's say, three ERO sub-objects. So once I configure three here, there will be three ERO tabs uh, opened up. And inside, the content of all the tabs are same. And we have to configure the sub ERO objects over in these, over in these uh, tabs. So here, the, uh, the ERO sub objects can be having SID type of uh, different uh, SID, MPLS level 20 bit, MPLS level 32 bits. These three types of SID types uh, uh, can be configured, along with uh, five types of NAI 
node ID 6, node ID adjacency, 6 adjacency, and a number adjacency. Uh, there is uh, all these fields are uh, available for the customer uh, or the user to, to use. Uh, let's configure the these arrows as MPLS level 20 bit and configure some levels over here. If NAI needs to be used, then uh, uh, you can use user can choose the NAI. Uh, if bit has to be disabled because a bit set means NAI type will be null, and then user can configure uh, corresponding IP addresses over here. Now, since we are configuring MPLS level 20 bit, let this be not applicable. Let's go to ERO2 and configure the levels. Similarly, metric also we can have more than one metric, and uh, you have to include the metric if uh, if user wants to uh, advertise those metrics as part of LSP PC initiated LSP message. Uh, the metric type there are four types of metric type available. User can configure whatever it he wants. Uh, let not uh, let me not use uh, these metrics in the in the in the PC initiated LSP. Uh, user also can you uh, configure bandwidth and LSP attributes uh, for the LSPs. Now let's go to the second PCC group. Uh, first of all, the IP address has to be configured. Similar parameters here as well. Let's uh, configure these LSPs per PCC is uh, 10 also here and capabilities is the same. Let's not change anything. Then go to the initial LSP parameter uh, where the LSPs are uh, statically configured. Let's configure the IP4 addresses or we can have IPv6 version over here. Uh, don't change anything on SRP, LSP, let us configure the LSP names from 51 to 100. So I have used uh, all uh, LSP names as unique, XL LSP 1 to XL LSP 50 in PCC group 1 and then XL LSP 51 to XL LSP 100 in PCC group 2. Let these uh, LSPs be consisting of two arrows. So then ERO 1 and ERO 2, let us configure them as IPv4 node ID. In that case, I may use the SID type as null. On the second year also, let me configure it as SID type null and NAI type IP4 node ID. Now let's uh, start the protocol. Okay, so all sessions have come up. Let's quickly go through the uh, 
statistics that are available so for pce pc session per port and drill down statistics are available pc sessions per port we have sessions information and then we have different types of messages txrx uh, information uh, followed by pc initiate messages uh, transmitted by the pce and then pc report message received and uh, uh, if there are pc update and pc error messages transmitted or received those uh, uh, statistics can also be populated over here similarly for for PCC, uh, similar stuff we have as statistics with different sessions uh, up, total, st not started, down, all those stuff, and then different messages and uh, uh, the PC initiate uh, RX and uh, report message TX. All, all those, all those informations are available under statistics. Uh, we can drill down by per session. So then. Uh, since there are 10 PCC sessions, uh, 10 rows will appear over here and uh, for each session we can have the corresponding statistics. Now let's uh, check the PCC learned information. What LSPs that the PCC has learned? So the uh, first five PCCs, uh, the LSPs were having three arrows and they were, uh, the type was uh, MPLS level 20 bit. So you can see there are 10 LSPs over here and each LSP uh, consists of three arrows, 101, 201, 301. Now let's uh, check the learned information of a PCC, uh, of the second PCC group and the PC side. Uh, these will be having uh, again 10 LSPs, but each LSP will be consisting of two arrows and the SID type is IP4 node ID there and node IDs are uh, as configured on the, on the on the on the pc side and you can see that uh, the source ip and destination ip was ipv6 address and which were configured as as this now uh, let us check uh, how can i update some uh, lsps on the fly to do that on the pcc group let us change some some level values of the eros that have been configured let's make it 1001 change the level values of the first two arrows and then then apply so this will result in uh, pc update message transmission on the pce side if we see pc sessions per port we'll be seeing that pc update messages have been transmitted has been transmitted so pcc will be updating his uh, lsps so let's see that uh, corresponding LSP is the uh, level values should have got changed. Yeah, so we can see the first two level values we had changed from 101 to 1001 and 2001 and uh, those have been reflected on the LAN information on the PCC side. So now uh, that's what the control part is. Now let's go to traffic and see how we can configure the traffic. So for uh, traffic to configure the uh, PCC will be the uh, source uh, endpoint uh, of the of any PCC traffic and all these endpoints that are over here will be will be exposed as uh, traffic source endpoint. Now one catch here is that uh, in this expected initial LSP for uh, for traffic endpoint tab, these LSP names has to be similar to the symbolic path names of the LSPs that the PCE has uh, installed on the PCCs. Unless these two matches, uh, PCC will not be able to uh, generate traffic because once uh, a PCC is asked to generate traffic over LSPs, uh, it will check this symbolic path name with the symbolic path name in the in, in his uh, LAN information database. If the LSPs are, uh, if it finds those that symbolic path name in his uh, this particular symbolic path name uh, in his uh, LAN info database, then only it will be able to fetch the corresponding level and uh, send out the traffic. If this symbolic path name, expected symbolic path name configured here, uh, doesn't match with the uh, LSPs that has been uh, installed by the PCE, uh, then the traffic will not be able to get generated. Now, then, now go to traffic. Also, there is a there is a parameter in the maximum expected segment count. Uh, this is this denotes that PCC is expecting. Uh, 
no LSPs from PCE will be consisting of more than uh, six segments. So when the traffic uh, is, uh, uh, when the PCC tries to uh, generate traffic, uh, it has to know uh, till maximum what uh, number of uh, seg uh, segments or SIDs or labels it will be uh, doing the lookup for. Unless it knows, it is not possible for him to, uh, unless uh, someone configures it, it's not, not possible for him to know uh, till uh, how many labels it will, it will do the lookup. So if someone has configured by default it is six, so a PCC expects that uh, no LSPs from the PCE will be more than having more than six EROs. If any LSP is having more than six arrows, then uh, the corresponding traffic will not be generated. Let's add a traffic and expand the, yeah. So this is the expected initial LSPs for traffic. Uh, this is the endpoint that will be used as source. Uh, if we, so there are 100 and you can see the LSP names over here. And uh, let us use the uh, PC IP4 address as the destination over here. Normally, this will be when ISIS is running over, running with uh, the PCC or PC over here. I ISIS uh, route ranges will be the destination IP. But since over here I have only PC, so I am using that as the destination. Uh, let's uh, track by MPLS flow descriptor and generate the traffic. So 100 packets should get generated. It has not got generated, so let's see uh, what went wrong. So I had done this activation on the fly and then I did not apply. So that's why the traffic did not get generated. Let's see now. Okay, so since I had used IP4 node IDs, uh, it is not able to find the IP4 node IDs uh, as ISIS is not, not running and that thereby it is uh, giving an error that uh, IGP needs to be running. So let me change the node and let me change the ERO subtype to MPLS level and then I will cover the Node IP4 node ID case in a different topology. We can change this on the fly. Let's do the change. Let's check on the PCC side that the uh, ERUs should now be changed to MPLS level. Yeah. Now let's try to configure traffic. Okay. 
okay so now uh, all the 100 packets have been generated so first uh, 50 will be having uh, three levels and uh, next 50 will be having two levels now let's start the traffic So you can see as we uh, were uh, uh, used MPLS flow descriptor as tracking. So there will be 100 uh, flows over here. So uh, first 50 uh, uh, over here and then the next page has the next 50. What we can do is we can use the current level, expose the current level to check the uh, levels that has been used over here. That, that can be done by adding traffic options over here. Just quickly regenerate it and send the traffic, apply and traffic. Okay, now we can see the outer and inner, uh, the current level. So for first 50 endpoints, uh, there will be having three levels. And then for the next 50 endpoints, the last 50 flows should have two levels since the last 50 LSPs were consisting of uh, two arrows. So this is how uh, 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 traffic is get uh, traffic gets generated with uh, uh, when the ERO sub 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 SID type is MPLS level. Uh, uh, next, I will just quickly show a topology where uh, the traffic uh, will be generated using IP4 uh, IP4 node address. Let me quickly load a configuration. Let me quickly explain the topology. So I have PC configured over here. I have a emulated PC channel group and I have one simulated PC channel group. So this emulated PC channel, this session is with the emulated PC, PCC over here. Uh, this PCC is again having a chain of uh, nine simulated PCCs and uh, this simulated PCC group uh, is having sessions with uh, these uh, nine simulated PCCs. Also, there is this ISIS uh, configured over both these uh, stacks, uh, both the side PC and PCC. Uh, these uh, nodes are getting advertised by uh, ISIS uh, SR and uh, the ISIS SR on the PCC side will, uh, will, will have the levels for uh, the IP addresses advertised by this side of the ISIS the PC side of the ISIS. Uh, let's see that uh, what IP addresses has been configured over here uh, for which uh, the PCC ISIS will have the levels. So on our simulated bridge, I have segment routing enabled, uh, which node prefix this, and there are some IP4 node routes as well. Uh, on the emulated PCC channel side, the EROs that have been configured uh, is having IP4 node ID has those 5.11 and 5.12 and 5.456789910. All those, all these addresses, these are actually the addresses that are getting advertised by uh, ISIS SR. Now let's first uh, start the topology.
first of all we'll check the, after the ISI session comes up we'll see uh, that the ISI is uh, running in the PCG side should have learned the SIDs or labels corresponding to the uh, IP addresses on the PC side. Let's do a uh, fetch learn info on the ISI side on PCC. And uh, yeah, so we have learned these uh, 5.1.1 uh, prefixes with uh, levels 26,123 and so on. Now, uh, we have also seen that these 5.11 addresses are actually uh, used as IP4 node ID in the LSPs that the PC uh, C has learned. So you can see that the PC C has learned the LSPs which uh, EROs are IP4 node IDs of 5.1.1.2.3 uh, and so on. Now when we generate the traffic, this is the traffic that uh, is already configured uh, which has endpoint as the emulated PC as the endpoint and uh, it has a source endpoint and the destination endpoint is some ISIS, ISIS routes. That uh, goes to uh, flow tracking and tracked by flow descriptor and then uh, generate the traffic. Now what happens is uh, now PCC sees that the uh, EROs are uh, of the type IP4 node so it doesn't have any direct uh, level so it goes to ISIS and uh, segment routing as ISIS segment routing and fetches the corresponding levels uh, for those IP4 node IDs and these are the levels that it has uh, fetched from the ISIS SR database running on the PCC side. Now uh, let's start the Traffic and we'll be able to see those levels. So you can see uh, there are ten LSPs and these are the levels that were that were used three arrows were there for each lsps uh, there are 10 lsps because on the expected lsp side uh, the configuration was 10 lsps yeah so expected initial lsp for traffic was 10 so uh, there were only 10 lsps over which the traffic got generated so this is how uh, the PCC and PCEs are configured and on, along with uh, traffics with uh, different types of uh, SID type and NAI type. We support uh, EROs, uh, ERO sub-objects type as uh, MPLS level 20 bit, MPLS level 32 bit or uh, NAI type as IP4 node ID or IP6 node IDs. Other type of IP4, uh, other type of NAIs or uh, uh, SID uh, or SID type uh, as SID segment index uh, is 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 not is not supported. So this is how uh, is the uh, configuration of PCC and PCs uh, sample configuration uh, done over back to back ports. Uh, so that's the end of the demo. Uh, thank you for your time.